So here we are. It is Monday, March 13th, and I'm Julie Enzer, and I am with um, Sydney Tunstall um, and Sarita Johnson. And Sydney and I are going to interview Sarita about the uh, Black Lesbian Feminist magazine Onyx. Um, and so I think we'll dive right in here. And uh -huh. Sarita, will you just start talking, start out and tell us a little bit about your experience with Onyx? Yeah, well, um, it was 1982, I believe, when I joined Onyx. And the reason why I'm saying that is because my daughter uh, was six months old when I joined. And I remember carrying her into the Onyx meeting and, and, feeding her she was there when um when i first um was with onyx uh i was li living in san francisco at the time and um and onyx was in oakland um uh, and i i don't even remember how it happened but pandora carpenter uh invited me to join onyx um, and so one, um, I think it was in the maybe afternoon, um, I showed up and it was just lovely. There were all these, uh, black lesbians there. Um, and it was almost like we were all there knowing we were there for the same purpose. Um, and so discord was not something that was common uh, in Onyx. Um, but I do remember uh, being very welcomed there uh, and it was it was such a, a lovely haven. Um, it, it was also different because uh, I, like I said, I was living in San Francisco at the time and um, the vibe in San Francisco is so different from the vibe in the East Bay where Oakland is. Um, uh, San Francisco people seem more hurried um, it's tense but once you get to Oakland there's trees and uh, people are a little bit more laid back so it was really nice to be in this group of women who were very open and laid back but would, you know they had a purpose and it was really really a nice mixture And so was this, this was really early on in the founding of it. Is that, that, that must be correct. Yeah. 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 It was already, I think there were a couple issues that had already come out before I joined. Um, and the only reason why I'm, I'm saying that, first of all, I just have to uh, have a little caveat here. I was in my twenties at the time and one thing I've learned about people in their 20s, I hope neither of you is in your 20s, is that uh, <laughs> is that people in their 20s, they are um, generally, they're all over the place. Um, not quite focused on one thing or the other and because they're doing what they need to do, which is to go out and live and explore and, and make all the mistakes they need to make. Um, and... So I felt like me in my 20s at that time, I was a little spacey. I felt like I, I spaced out a lot. Um, and things that I remember, I'm like, huh, I wonder what that, huh, I wonder how that, what really happened? Like, I felt like I wasn't quite there. Um, but, uh, but, I, but I will tell you what I do remember. Um, and yeah, so I think that there were, I think two issues, oh yeah, there we are. There were two issues before um, before I uh, came and joined Onyx. Um, and so it was, it, you're right. It was kind of like at the, pretty much the beginning of it that I joined. Um, and um, It, I felt like there was no, there were no hitches at all. Uh, we all knew that we wanted to um, bring our voices out to the public. Um, 
we wanted to present something um, that was consistent um, and and we were just very, very happy and proud to be exactly who we were. Um, and that was like across the board. There was no, um, how can I say, there was no contention around that. Um, when I joined, you know, as, I, as I'm looking at the covers here, uh, I don't even remember how it is that I came to start doing the covers. Um, I'm not sure if, um, I don't, I, I'm pretty sure I, I let them know, let the group know that that's something I would like to do. I would like to work on covers for Onyx. Um, and at the same time there, I was not aware of any, um, uh, contention or competition from the person who was doing the, the covers before. Um, and that, that kind of stood out to me and it's like, okay, um, people were, people were flexible in Onyx. Uh, if you had a good idea, if you had something that, that, uh, was a value, it was definitely considered. Um, and I never felt like, um, uh, like an idea that I had was, uh, rejected outright there were there were um i mean people gave feedback um and that's what i like nobody was afraid to give feedback uh if somebody had an idea for an article to write um and if somebody had a problem with a part of that they would actually discuss it there would be no argument it, there would just be discussion and it might end up with somebody saying, well, are you really married to this idea? And the other person would say, well, mm, not really. I, I, I can, I can change this part or, uh, or I, yes, I am really married to this idea. It means a lot to me. And then, um, and usually it would happen that that person would be able to have, to have their idea um, printed. Um, it was really nice really, really nice. Um, in terms of the covers, um, uh, before we go into the covers, can I ask just sure. two clarifying questions? Yeah. So one question I have is, were you, were you already working as an artist, thinking of yourself as an artist when you joined that collective? What oh. was your, you know, like what was, what was a bit of your journey to being an artist? Yeah. Good question. Um, I, have been drawing since I was three. Um, and the only reason why I know that is because my sister, who's 13 years older than me, um, she takes the credit for bringing home paper and crayons for me. And then, um, then she was floored by what I was able to do with the crayons and paper. So I was able to actually draw something that looked like something and looked really good. Uh, as a three-year-old drawing it. Uh, and so from that point on, I've been drawing. Um, at the time um, I joined Onyx, uh, yes, I was still drawing uh, and had a baby. And, um, you know, some people, they will stop their art while they're having a baby or, or while they're having some life changes, but that the art has been the thread that's been consistent uh, throughout my life. Um, so by the time I got to Onyx, um, drawing was just something that I did. Um, and, and it was something I felt proficient at and confident at. And then it was a gift I thought I could give to Onyx. Great. And then will you just sketch a little bit of your coming out story? Because it seems like that did not happen in conjunction with Onyx. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I was 18 when I came out. Um, and I remember having to come out twice to my mom, who didn't believe me the first time. And so I had to come out again. Uh, she was heartbroken, but um, but she, uh, she came around. Um, and I, I came out like, okay, 
I one day I'm in the closet and the next day I'm completely out. So I came out to everybody, family, friends, and I, you know, and if you're able to continue to accept me, great. And if you can't, well, fuck you. And so that's how that's how I came out. Um and and of course it's it's never finished. It's the coming out process is it's just constant. Uh, but that that's how I came out. So I was already out uh, by the time um, I joined Onyx. Okay, great. And so then I'm going to share, I think, now the, um, the artwork. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we have illustrate. So there's, there's three sort of sets of, artwork here that we have in this document the covers then there's um three or four small illustrations and then there we also have the texts that you wrote for the journal uh -huh. Uh -huh. um so i am going to share those and I'm trying to get that together here we go so now you can see the covers yeah yeah Okay, and so, and I think we have them in, in the order that they appear. So the, the first cover, yeah. as you said, there were these two issues before, although we have this hunch that there's a phantom additional issue that came out in June, potentially, of 1982. Oh, okay. Um, but we haven't been able to track it down, but there's some textual references in the first one that says it's the second one. Okay. But so far, that has not been unearthed. Oh, Okay. A copy. And I don't have it either. So. You don't have it. You don't have it no, either. I looked. I looked. I don't have it. So um. this was the first. This was see, and, it, and they call it. This is the third issue we have in the archive, but it's volume one, number four. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so this this is the first cover that you did. Uh huh. Right. Right. Um. Uh. One of the things I remember. Uh, what I used, I'm not sure if I actually used it with this one. Um, this is one, this one in the, I have like, uh, it wasn't until like probably the fifth cover that I figured out exactly how I wanted to do um, these covers. Yeah, that's probably, like, probably around this one. Um, Around the time of the fifth cover, I discovered um, erasable Bic pens, cheap pens, but but they're ink that you can erase. And so um, I realized I, I love being able to do the shading with uh, pointillism or using dots. Um, and I think this fifth issue was probably the first time I did that. Um, but that worked really well using the erasable pen. Um, so these dots like right here? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, and prior to that, I think I was just using um, uh, like Pilot Fine Line felt tip pen. Um, and so I felt like like the first few covers to me uh, are much more rudimentary than the later ones that that I did, um, and I think what I would do I I'm not even sure that I would um, consult the group. Okay, what should the cover be this next time? I think I would just show up to the meetings and 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 say, look, here's a cover, and and everybody would be like, oh, cool, okay. Um, which I thought was really great. I felt like I had a absolute freedom um, to uh, make the covers however I wanted them to be. Um, and I think from what I wanted to do mostly in the covers is just show black lesbians just living life. Um, and so this one, this first one is just, a woman reading a book at home, like, yeah, yeah, we do that too. Um, so I, I think, uh, yeah, I think that's, 
uh, that's what I remember. Definitely the first one. Great. And then the uh, well, one thing that strikes me about these first couple and my dogs are having a little tussle here uh -huh. is that they start from one person and then it sort of expand, like it's almost like there is this expanding kind of community of people oh. through these covers, which may not have been conscious at the time, but certainly emerges as you look at them now. Oh, that's so cool. I never even, I never even thought of that. I love that. Oh. Yeah, say, same same with this one. It's just, um, I, I really just enjoyed showing black lesbians just being the human beings we are. Um, and so the great thing about working with Onyx is that Onyx and the group of people that worked in Onyx, they embodied that. They're like, okay, we're gonna be absolutely human. And we are going to be able to listen to each other and express ideas and laugh and have fun and eat. And it was it was like a celebration every time uh, there was a meeting. It was nice. And how many how do you recall how regularly you met and how many people would come to the meetings? Oh, gosh, let's see. I don't remember how often we met. Um I don't know if it was like once a month, once every two weeks. I'm trying to think because I know that um, when we would have an issue come out every month. Um, and so that meant we had to meet at least once a month. But something tells me we met more often than that. Uh, I always remember that that every time there was a meeting, I had something to show. So that's why I'm thinking we met monthly, um, but I'm not so sure. Okay. I'm not sure. Uh, it wasn't like once a week. Okay. Yeah. And so here by the third one, you're doing something thematic and also with, it, it seems to me like having a child in the uh -huh. image also seemed really significant. I mean, this was December of 1982. Um, uh -huh. It was well before where sort of historians place um, a lesbian baby boom or lesbian families, all that kind of stuff. So this kind of feels like a very early, um, uh, an early example of something that lesbians start thinking about a lot more over the next decade. So I just yeah. wonder if you have any any recollection if, about about including the child in the in the family, really this kind of black lesbian family gathering? Um, well, I think it has to do with my life because um, because, like I said, my daughter was at the meetings <laughs> a lot of the times, um, and um, when I was twenty three, twenty two, twenty three, that's when I decided I'm going to have a baby. Um, and so uh, I went the sperm donor route, um, found my own sperm donor, um, and he was willing. And it didn't even occur to me, oh, Sarita, you're a lesbian and you're going to have a baby. You know that's like nearly against the law here in the United States. That didn't even cross my mind. <laughs> <laughs> it was like biological time to have a baby. I don't care what else is going on. Um, so I think with this cover, I was also realizing, Oh, I'm a black lesbian with a baby. <laughs> and, and so, uh, and all the things that that means, uh, for me, uh, my wife at the time, my daughter, uh, so I think it became natural now that I was aware of the depth of what I had done and, and was doing, uh, it made sense to put that in one of the covers. Great. It's a gorgeous image. Oh, thank you. 
and then we'll just I'll just keep going through them if there are things you want to say yeah. just yeah. chime in and this is this is an interesting cover when I think about working on onyx um this cover always comes to mind um I'm not even sure what I was thinking when I made this cover except that um I'm thinking uh that from from the white person's gaze uh black lesbians just don't measure up um and and it doesn't matter if it's a white lesbian group or a straight white women's group or a, a men's group uh that's why it doesn't matter um it's it's nearly impossible to uh, to meet whatever standard their gaze is is uh creating um, and so I decided to make this cover. Uh, but I always think about this cover. And I think this, I'd have to go back and look at the notes, but I think this also corresponds to when Onyx was writing a lot about the um, racial discrimination that was happening at the bar Ollie's. Oh, yes. Yes. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think I, I think that that there's part of it because that was a big that was a big arc through the course of all of the journals. This kind of the 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 exposure. And it's you know, it's interesting for me reading reading it from years later and also from a different sort of le um lesbian experience, but there's a way that Ollie's like what happened at Ollie's has been replicated so many times, right? Like, yeah. uh, like it could be Ollie's, it could be where, where, when I was living in Detroit, it was the railroad crossing. Um, you know, the same thing was happening at a bar when I was living in Washington, DC, uh -huh. right? So there's this kind of like repeatedness. Yeah. And I think this image, you know, really captures a lot. Yes. Thank you. And I was, as you were talking, I'm thinking that it's repeated because it never left. Right. Um, I mean, it's a, something that uh, every person of color and especially every black person has to deal with all the time, nonstop. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's unfortunate, but um, yeah. until, um, you know, I think, I think uh, people of color Black people have been fighting for white people to see us as full human beings. Uh, that fight is still going on. And but the only way that that's going to change is, I think, not if the struggle comes from us trying to convince white people of that, but for the struggle to come from white people, for them to realize, OK, oh, yeah, this is what we've been doing. we got to stop this shit. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, yeah. And I noticed that the other thing with the last one, we also move into for a while when the when the when Onyx started, it was monthly. Uh huh. Migrates into um, bi monthly, so every other month, um, and that happened kind of in the spring of nineteen eighty three. Oh, okay. So maybe. I don't even remember. I didn't remember that. But um, I'm wondering if that's like the beginning of of Onyx slowing down and stopping, um, well, which which makes sense. Yeah. Um, this particular cover is the one that shows the style that I was working towards the whole time. Mm -hmm. uh, I mastered that little cheap erasable Bic pen. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm very pleased with it. And and it's a very celebratory cover. I'm probably celebrating the fact that I finally got it together. Um, <laughs> but also the, you know, the fact that it's, it's around pride yeah. uh, and celebration. Yeah, yeah. And again, a child. Yes. In the corner. 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Oh, yeah, I remember this one. Um, I think one of the continuity is, has been really important for everyone, but especially for Black people in this country. Um, and I think I was, I think I was one of the younger people that was in Onyx. Um, and I had tremendous respect for the other members that were older than me. Um, and I, I kind of understood that everybody needs continuity. Um, and Black lesbians definitely need that same kind of continuity where there's wisdom that's passed down from the older lesbians uh, to the younger lesbians. Um, and I think that that's central to our survival. Um, unfortunately, um, many of the, the older women that were in Onyx passed away. Um, and so I'm hoping that, that, uh, those of us that are continuing to live, um, I'm hoping that we can keep the thread going. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Um, what if, oh, oh, go ahead. I was going to say one of the things that strikes me about this particular cover, you know, because we can go back to the very first one you did, which is another image of a woman oh, reading. Yes. Right. So we have this return to a uh, woman reading, but oh, it's yes. so much more. Um, this one seems so much more joyful. Yes. Yes. Um, I, I love how I love the connections that you're making because I never saw them. Um, I, I was just doing doing covers. Um, this one, uh, there's there was a a woman who was a member of Onyx uh, named Vivian, and uh, she doesn't know this, but she was my model for for this. I did this by and as I did all the covers by memory. Um, I didn't have a model in front of me. But um, Vivian was my model uh, for this one, um, and Vivian was one of the one of the several members of Onyx who were just absolutely lovely, joyous, um, uh, very much uh, grounded in herself, knew herself, and was just celebratory. Um, so she was she was like the perfect perfect model. Uh, for this. And I agree with you. Um, this one, um, there's more light in this particular uh, image of this woman reading than the previous one. Um, and a lot of that has to do with my technique. I know I knew at this point how to bring the light in. Uh, and whereas in the first one, I didn't, I didn't quite know how to do that. Um, and it'd be interesting to see. It also if, uh, seems like you can see, like, um, it's interesting to hear you say, like, there was a model for this, but because it does seem also like the specificity of a of a black lesbian before us is yes. really present in this, and yes. it, it's present in the other one, but it's it's but it's just not as immediate. Yeah, and it all you know. So there's almost. Um, as I have been thinking about these journals, there's almost a way that the the magazine also brings it into being, right? Yeah. The the kind yeah. of presence. Right. Um, and I, I was going to say that that might be the same thing about what was going on with me. Um, and one thing I like about art or any any kind of art is that I think there's a way that one is living without knowing that they're living and it's coming out in the artwork. It's coming out of the art. So I think, think that um, at the beginning of my being in Onyx, um, 
I think I was still very much, much closed. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a new environment. It was new people. Um, and I think by this time, uh, in 83, uh, I knew more about, knew what I was doing. I knew, uh, I, I, I knew where I was in terms of the group. It, it might have something to do with my own maturity, uh, me coming into my own. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. Uh, and uh, this one, well, I, I, I'm very fond of this one too. I had a great time working on this one. Um, and the, the woman who is behind um, the woman, uh, the woman it's who has yeah, her, uh, uh -huh. she is modeled after Pandora, uh, who ended up being uh, my daughter's grand uh, godmother. Uh, and uh, what's funny is that when I'm, as I'm looking at this, I did not intend for this to be Pandora, but it looks just like her. So um, I'm going to assume that there's a part of me that knew that this was my model um, for that. And that she became a very, very important person in my daughter's life. So it makes sense that there would be a child here with Pandora in the background, looking at the child, that that makes a lot of sense. Interesting, but your child at this point is is only about a year and a half, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's it's about it's about two. Yeah, about two. Okay, so yeah. I mean, like I look at this child and see a child of four or five. Uh huh. Right. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not. I mean, the child is not modeled after my daughter. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, uh, the the idea of motherhood, uh, raising kids, raising kids the way we think is the right way for us to raise our kids, um, that was very present. Yeah, yeah. And of course, there's the contrast between the first cover that you did for the holiday season you know, it has the, has the Christmas tree and the kind of the, the Christian accoutrement uh -huh. with it. And of course this one so rooted in Kwanzaa. Yes. Uh, and it was around this time that, that I learned about Kwanzaa. Okay. Um, and most likely it was probably already, I was already um, uh, enjoying Kwanzaa with my daughter and my wife at the time, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I forgot about this one. Um, and I don't remember what articles were in this one. Do you know which articles were in this one? Yeah, I can uh, pull it up. Okay. Uh, I'm, uh, I, I'm assuming you're not seeing the screen as I'm pulling this up. Now I have to reshare. No. Yeah, I'll reshare in one second. So this, we can, I think there wasn't a table of contents. So I'm going to try and scroll through slowly. Okay. So we have this kind of journal entry from Lucille Hunt. A it looks like this is a poem by Sasuranya. Okay. I'm saying that right. Lesbianism is a reality. Uh -huh. The announcements. I love this. Here's this apology um, for not having a review of Homegirls as promised in this issue. Mm. 
um, you know, and really asking, saying like, we need people to review things. Yeah. And then we have the calendar, uh -huh. the classifieds. Okay. I was yeah. trying to figure out if what, I don't quite remember what prompted me to do this cover. Um, and besides being, being a black person in the United States. Um, right. So, um, but I remember that this cover had to be made. It, it's one of those um, instances where uh, the artwork is telling me what to do. This has to be made. This cover has to be made. Um, and I, I think it also uh, it, it points to that uh, Black lesbians are in the struggle against racism, just like any other group of Black people has always been. Um, uh, we can be murdered uh, like any other group of African Americans in this country. Um, and we can be at the forefront of fighting it as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also just that that um there's no end to racism that we can see. Uh in the background, I don't know if you can see, um there's enslaved Africans being um uh watched over uh by an overseer and that that's that that's um an unbroken line um, from the police brutality that we see now. Um, so I think that's where I was coming from with that. Oh, so so the that's why the police officers on this horse mm -hmm. the echo with the overseer here. Yes. Yes. Now I'm trying to figure out at some point I'm trying to remember which one it was um, at some point I had gone to a demonstration probably around this time and it was in San Francisco and the police were on horseback. And I remember thinking, that's really scary. <laughs> that is really scary. Um, and I was sitting down, linking arms with a whole bunch of group of, whole group of people. Uh, I don't know if we were blocking a door or something. We were doing some kind of peaceful demonstration. I was thinking, I hope I am able to get home this evening. So I'm wondering if it was around this time hmm. um, that I did this cover. I'm not sure. I don't remember. And I was trying to, I, but I think that Timothy Lee was murdered by the Klan in Concord. Ah. I, but was I think that- time? I think that was a year or so later. I, I'll have to, I'd have to look at my notes, but okay. I think it was, I think it was later. Okay. Hmm. But in terms of the, in terms of covers, that's one of my favorites. Yeah. Um, and just, um, just technique wise, um, I, I think I did a pretty good job with that horse. <laughs> um, yeah. And I, and the action and the movement in in um, the image, I think I did a did a pretty good job with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's 
an incredible image. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, did you, so in this one, you did not letter in the Onyx Black Lesbian Newsletter. That was, that, that was pasted on the image for print. Yes. Okay. Yes. And the same thing, but in some of the earlier ones, I think, did you, did you hand do Onyx? Um, uh, if you can go to the first one, I, I don't think I did. Oh no, but you did, you did this lettering here, October yeah. 8th. Yeah, I did that one there. But they did the paste up of Black yeah. Lesbian Newsletter. Yeah. Okay. And then this one was also paste up? Yeah. Yes. Oh, and then here, that was paste up, but then you also made it look like another photograph. Yeah. Got it. Okay. And then here, they start, this is paste up. Right. That's right. Okay. We got high tech. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so then the next one, April, May. Um, yeah, that's a nice one. I guess it's a Mother's Day one. Oh, yeah. I think, I think that's, that's it. I think, um, and again, the, the theme of this one is continuity uh, uh, the generations uh, still touching yeah uh, and I think I was probably learning how to do knit cable cable knit sweaters at the time um, uh -huh. so that's I basically, I, I think what I'm seeing is that everything I do is autobiographical in some way or another in terms of my, my artwork. Well, the, uh, you know, when, another thing that really strikes me is because I've taught Alison Bechdel's work so much. Oh, uh-huh. Um, that it's it's striking to me the way you're using photographs in the way that she really, particularly in the in Fun Home when she gets to her graphic novels, yeah, kind of beyond Dykes to watch out for, um, uh -huh. the way that she's using photos to that echo. Also, I think questions of continuity in in yeah. in queerness. Um, right. But also um, bringing in the reader, like the photos are all often held in hands as you're holding the book in your hand. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I think about people holding the newsletter and then holding these photos that you're showing nice. here too. Nice. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. we love to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I I think especially with this one, I wanted to show. Um. I mean, in this. Um, uh, puritanical, country, um. That it's hard enough for a lot of people. It, it, maybe it's becoming less difficult, but uh, it's hard enough for people to see people loving um, in public anyway. Uh, there's kids who have never seen their parents show affection. Um, and, and the way the way boys are taught, they're taught not to even express a need for affection. Um, and so I think it's even more um, unusual for people to see two black women showing affection to each other. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and this, this just goes along with 
the fact that I wanted to show black lesbians being human. Mm -hmm. And I think over the course of them, also this array of representation of Black lesbians, yeah. right? Like nothing, um, like one of the things that's striking about this is that, that you know, they're, they're just, they're two people. There's not nods to this conventional butch femme ideas. Right. There, there's, and in, and in that way, it's, kind, it's almost like, um, um, it's, it's both, sort of liberating and also this kind of like resistance of yeah you know we're not going to be portrayed in a narrow way right right exactly mm -hmm. and I know that when I was drawing this that must have crossed my mind mm -hmm. um because um most of us have been indoctrinated with okay so which one of you is the butch and which one of you is the femme Right. Um, and so I know that when I was working on this, that that must have crossed my mind. Okay. Am I going to make one of them butch and one of them femme? It's like, no, yeah. uh, no, <laughs> uh -huh. uh, I don't live that way. So, right. um, there's no need to make anybody, any, anybody in my artwork live that way as well. And then this next one is the last one, the last, the last issue that's published. Uh huh. Uh. I think it's interesting that I I chose this one for the last, the last issue. Of course, you may not have known it was the last issue at the time. Oh, okay, maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. Um. But I, um, in a way, I love that that this was the last image, um, because just because Onyx might not continue doesn't mean that um, other publications can't get started. Um, and so this image, uh, to me, it it feels like okay, this will carry on other people will um, will create places where our voices can be can be heard mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. let's see the other, and thing, then... oh, the other thing about that oh, can you can you go back to yeah. that one yeah okay. um is that there's a first quarter moon and uh, in my experience with the first quarter moon is that whatever is going to get intense will get intense around the first quarter. Um, so whether that means um, intense in a good way or intense in a very uncomfortable way. Uh, but that particular moon in my life has been very important. Um and I, I can always tell when it's the first quarter without even looking up at the sky. I can, I can just go by, okay, what the hell is going on? Why is this, why is whatever's happening right now so intense? Um, and then usually if I do look up into the sky, it's the first quarter. Um, so I think the intensity of working on uh, working on something for publication uh, is also part of this uh, this picture. Ah. So this is really the story of this is this is somebody working at the light board. Yes. And then this is somebody typesetting. Yeah. 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 Typing. Yeah. And then in here we have the the now an infant in arms, baby in uh -huh. arms. Uh-huh. And is there something else that was in your mind about this this person? I don't know. Let's think. Um that could be me, because at that time my hair was short. Mm -hmm. Um and 
And although my daughter was older than this baby, that that would have been me um, working at Onyx. Got it. And it's interesting because, you know, the opposite, the, the kind of ba all of these temporal things uh -huh. are all in one area. You know, it's not just the uh -huh. moon, it's the clock and the calendar. And it's interesting if that is you, that, that they're at opposite sides. <laughs> right. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Let me see, why would that be? Um, Besides the fact that um, I do operate on my own time schedule um, and, you know, I can, I was a school teacher for 19 years, so I do know how to be punctual, but it's not really my, it's not really my, my time, my time frame. Um, uh, but that, I, I love that. I love that you pointed that out. Well, it was really, when we, when we, when I was looking at it, it was really striking to me that all of the, you know, that the person doing the typesetting is the, like the, um, sort of all tethered to the, to the time and the human, like time and dateness of it all. Right. Um, and, and, and then that the baby is not, not tied to that. That's right. right. <laughs> like they're living in their own, their own separate um, that's true that is true um and if if i had my my um if i had a choice i would stick to the baby's timeline i that's you know i it's um uh, time itself the way it's the way it's ordered here uh and the way it's ordered uh in in our society and the way people live nowadays, it's so at odds with my humanness. Um, and, and it's like um, something with, with, with its knees, with something cut off at the knees. It's like, it's not grounded in anything um, real. Uh, so yeah, I would go by the baby's timeline <laughs> anytime. So then we have this the smaller illustrations, which is really interesting because I don't even remember. I have I have no recollect recollection of this image at all, which is not unusual. Um, I I've, I've done so many drawings. I've given drawings away, and then people will come up or they'll write to me and say, "Oh, Sarita, remember this drawing?" I'm like. No, are you sure I did that? Yes, you did it. So I don't remember this one at all. Wow. So this was early. This was in the first three issues because it was still being called Black Lesbian Newsletter. Uh huh. Um, and here's the continuation of this article by Vivian Walker Crawford, who you uh -huh. mentioned. Um, so that's one. Here's another one. Uh I don't remember that one either. <laughs> so this, this is fun. This must um, be a drawing by somebody in the We Sound Like This group. Oh. That played in oh. August of 82 at Ollie's. I love it. Yeah. Wow. And then here's another one. No, I have no idea. I'm glad I did them, but I have no recollection of them. Now, do you have a recollection? Did you do the the um, words here, changes in wonderment? You know, it looks like it looks like something I would do, but I don't. I don't. I don't think so. The reason yeah. why I don't think so because I I I I never made my G's like that ever. Got it. oh with that little hang the yeah. The, so the I don't hair. think so. Okay. 
All right. And then we have the articles that you wrote. Uh-huh. Occupation or how to be used at your own expense. I'll have to well, send these. Have I'll have to no pull idea. these out. What's that? I'll pull them out and send them to you. Okay, great. Um, I person I had forgotten that you wrote this article. I um remember reading it on my first read through because it's a really um it really indicts white women for how they use African American women, oh. um, particularly in these political contexts, to uh -huh. um, sort of um, make themselves better. Here, I don't know if that oh. makes it any bigger for you. Oh, let's see. Um, but this was this was one of the. Um, I think this was, you know, one of the topics that people talk about and think about in Onyx in really. Um, important ways, sort of like how, what are the dynamics between um, white women, particularly white lesbians and black lesbians? Uh-huh. <laughs> so this is very, it's very, uh. it, it is just spot on lesbian satire. <laughs> oh my God. Squelch any mental references to Jim Jones. Oh my God. Uh-huh. Oh. Oh, I would love for you to send that to me. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah, yeah. I'll 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 pull this. So that's one. We just have a couple here. And it continues. Like this is a long piece. Wow. Right? Goes all the way to here. Um and then we have this article about Cassie Lopez running for Oakland, which you did not write. Then you are the person who reviewed the color purple. I did? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow this is one of the earliest reviews of the color purple wow well that's cool yeah And the color purple, the review continues. That's so funny because I don't remember writing that at all. I remember writing this one. The Kwanzaa one? Yeah, I remember yeah. that. And yeah, and then the, the last two pages are the Kwanzaa piece. Well, cool. Yeah. So those were all of your contributions to Onyx. Oh, I'm pleased. <laughs> I love it when I contributed something and have no idea when I did that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's great. Right. Um, so you, when when we talked before, you talked about Onyx. Uh, can you talk just a little bit about what you remember about why it ended? Whoops, we lost Sydney. Uh-oh. I imagine she'll come back on. Okay. Um, can you talk a little bit about your recollections of the ending of Onyx? I don't, you know, I don't remember how it stopped, but it wasn't just, it wasn't sudden. Um, Cause that I would remember mm -hmm. if, if, you know, we're, we're all there and then there's a discussion, we got to stop. Um, um, so in a way it, it wasn't surprising when it finally ended, mm -hmm. um, I think, I don't know if it had to do with um, energy, burnout, or people's lives taking different turns. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, I, maybe you're, you're the one that said that around that time, um, or was it, or, or did I say that? That around that time, different things were closing. So uh, a woman's place bookstore was closing. Um, uh, Mama Bears was still open, mm -hmm. um, but it was like there was a trend of decline of uh, woman owned and operated things, mm -hmm. uh, bookstores. Um, 
So, so I'm not sure. I am not sure. That's probably one of the places I spaced out. Um, and uh, I don't know. Did did Judy Andreas ever get a hold of you? No. Okay. Uh, because I, uh, she's, um, she was Pandora Carpenter's wife, mm -hmm. and um, so she's my daughter's my daughter's other godmother. But um, I had I had called her and asked her what she knew um, because I told her because I was like mostly spacey during uh, the whole time um, and and um, I gave her your contact information so she was going to contact you um, to to give you what she recalls Great. about Onyx. so she would know why it ended uh -huh. Okay. But it it wasn't like um it wasn't like a tragedy, like something tragic happened and Onyx had to stop. I think it was more um it was more human. It was more our lives were changing, people going in different directions, um maybe too much energy was needed to keep it going. But you'll have you'll have to um get some other, hopefully some other um, people's input as to why it ended. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what did you do? You, what do you carry with you from it? Well, for one thing, I carry the fact that it is possible for people to be absolutely themselves in the face of each other and to be held with uh, compassion and with understanding um, and also as part of being themselves um, uh, give critiques and take critique um, I think Onyx was one of the one of the best examples of that um, it, w it was something to marvel at mm -hmm. you know when 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 I see groups of people that that can't get along because they have different opinions about something. Uh, it's like mm, that that's not necessarily the way you have to be. Um, with Onyx, it seemed like we had one one place where we agreed, and that was uh, that it's very important for us to have this publication that allows our voices to be heard. Any other place we could disagree, and 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 it was fine. Mm -hmm. We could be ourselves, and I felt like I could totally be myself, myself there, spacey as I was, I could totally be myself there, uh, and that has to do with um, all the women that were in Onyx. Great, I want to share the list of people now. Uh -huh. Um, and so you can, and, and I'm going to just write and take notes right on the screen, if that's okay. Okay. I don't remember AC Barber. Okay. Marlene Bonner. I remember she was lovely. She actually died last year. Um, and she was, she was like, um, one of the warmest, um members of onyx and but she's also she, she could also be one of the most stubborn so when she set her mind to something there was no there was there was no moving her off that um and that's just that's just how she was and um she was just lovely lovely um vivian walker crawford um in fact, a lot of a lot of the people I'm that I know, they have the same kind of character in that um just absolutely open and loving. Uh and Vivian was was one of those. Um and uh, but and she also she had, you know, she had her own mind and um 
if there was something that didn't sit right with her, she would call you on it. Um, and, but there was always underneath, always a, a net of love. So it was really nice. And has she uh, passed away? I don't know. Did she? I don't, I don't know. Okay. I don't okay. know. I don't know. Okay. Um, Anita County, I, I vaguely remember her, um, uh, really sweet and rather quiet. Um, and I, I lost track of most everybody, um, after, after Onyx. Um, Lindsay, I remember, um, very sharp wit, um, uh, and, um, uh, She's somebody you 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 would want her on your side if you were battling uh, somebody. She was amazing. My one of the memories I have of her is uh, one time she came over to um, our apartment in San Francisco, and um, my daughter was talking. So she must have been around two or three, um, and. She talked, my daughter talked constantly, constantly. It's like nonstop, nonstop. Um, and, um, <laughs> and I always remember Lindsay looking at me going, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, um, and I think Lindsay actually became part of a choir. Okay, you'll have to help me out. Well, maybe you don't know. There's a, a famous choir in the Bay Area um, led by a very progressive um, choir leader. I don't remember. Is and it a, a women's choir or? No. No, they performed a lot too. I don't remember what their name was. Well, anyway, Lindsay became part of that choir. Got it. Onyx. Uh, and Joyce, um, another uh, wonderful kind of mild mannered uh, woman uh, with a core of steel. Um, very, very wonderful. I don't remember Janet Wallace. Okay. And I don't remember Deborah Steele. And these are all, I just pulled a anybody who ever contributed and was on that masthead. So oh, that's great. Great. Yeah. Okay. And Gwen, um, Gwen is, is, fabulous um and and i hope i hope definitely hope she's still alive um she was again one of these women who knew herself she was loving she was open um she was funny as hell it had a great sense of humor and i think she actually worked um at the bart station uh one of the bart stations um and i don't know if that's during but definitely it was after um, Onyx. Um, she's one of the people that uh, I, I would run into her like once every two years. And it was almost like we just, we just continued where we left off from our last conversation. It was very, very easy um, uh, to, to be around her and, and, and pick up where we left off from. Mm -hmm. Carol Cole. The name sounds familiar, but I don't remember who she is. And I don't remember Ann Sandifer. Uh, Mary Midget. Um, I remember her. Um, uh, she was she was a firecracker. Um, really a kind, a kind, kind woman. Um, and she actually, I think she died recently. She may have died last year. Uh, 
I don't I don't know who Nubian woman is. And I don't remember KDF Reynolds. But Pandora definitely I remember my daughter's um godmother. Um Pandora was amazing. She was one of the most gregarious people I ever I ever met. Um she used to drive a uh, she used to drive a cab and mm -hmm. um which she loved because she'd be able to talk to the people that she was um uh, you know, picking up from the shopping center and taking them home and uh that was a perfect perfect job for her um she also used to be a member of rye crips um which is uh uh, disability rights theater. Um, so Is it's that like, right? no, it's like, um, W R Y. Mm -hmm. And then Crips. Ah, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Um, yes. And Pandora, Pandora could befriend anyone and everyone. Mm -hmm. Um, and the great thing about her is that um she because she, because she would connect with everybody it, she would really connect with everybody she could connect with somebody who was uh, totally disagreed with everything about her she could still find a way to connect um with them and it's it was really admirable mm -hmm. uh pam king i don't remember But Lynn Scott, I do. And Lynn Scott and I, we are uh, friends on Facebook. Um, and actually I'd given her your information too. Um, so you may or may not hear from her. Um, Lynn Scott, uh, again, one of these fantastic open women who um, just had this, and, and still has this inner strength. Um, that's the kind, all these women are the kind of people that that younger people need to be around because the wisdom of, of these women, it shows through, it just comes through. They, um, they knew their minds, they lived long enough to know, okay, this is bullshit, this is not. Um, and Lynn's one of those people, mm -hmm. uh, very, very clear seeing. Um, and, and she'll call something what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, Jerry Ewart, I don't remember. Paula Ross, I kind of remember. Um, But the same, it's, uh, and that's why, that's why I feel like Onyx was amazing is that everybody was their own person and knew how to be kind at the same time, knew how to be open, knew how to be compassionate. Um, and Paula Ross was, was the same way. Mm -hmm. Marianne Turner, I'm not quite sure. Um, I'm not quite sure. I remember her. Camille Barber. Uh, we actually went to CCAC when it was um, California College of Arts and Crafts. We actually uh, graduated the same year. With CCAC. Oh. Um, and she she had a a, a great sense of humor, um, and a really a really um really clear thinker um yeah i, I think that's that's that would be her Roz Derensburg i don't know who that is and i don't know who the last four are great
Okay. Anything else you want to share? Um, no, I'm just really glad that that um that you and Sydney are doing this. This is it's really good and, and totally unexpected. Um, I kind of felt like okay, and this is I'll, I'll tell you why I think of this. Um, once Onyx was over, I'm like okay, I'm gonna go on with the rest of my life, and and it never occurred to me that somebody would be interested um, in Onyx and what we did. So I'm really, I'm really glad that you all are. The reason why I can, I can get up and just go live my life is that I grew up as an army brat. And so I'm accustomed to living in one place, doing great work, having a great best friend and then leaving and like leaving completely. And it's like, okay, that's that life time for the new life so I I grew up like that um until I was 11 um so for me I'm accustomed to leaving stuff behind and being surprised when it comes back like oh hi um so I'm really I'm really thankful to you and Sydney for doing this so so what you know eventually this is going to become an issue of the journal uh-huh um, and um um so what like one thing i know we're going to want to use we would love to use an image or two from the covers in some kind yeah. of way yeah. um if you feel uh we can write up something from this interview uh -huh. also if you feel inspired to write something we're excited by that idea um okay. what whatever kind of whatever occurs to you um, okay. We're going to also be dividing up the issues and asking um, younger women to write about them. As I nice, said. So, nice. You know, like so that, that there's some kind of like dialogue across the Yeah. Ages. Oh, that's great. Um, at this point, I cannot, uh, I'm working on four graphic novels simultaneously right now. So I can't think of writing anything else <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, so uh, I might have to bow out of that one yeah. Uh, but yeah use whatever covers you want uh, I would love I would love to um, to read what um, younger people are thinking of this I think that'd be great yeah yeah we'll loop back to you is it like it's going to take us a while to you know get um, they, I feel like we're in the early part of, of one of the Oceans Oceans movies, right? Like uh -huh. you know, trying to get the band together. Yeah. Um, and we're like learning more about the mark, as it were. Right, right. You know, like <laughs> what night do they have the most money? Um, um, you know, so so it's going to be it's it's a little bit of a journey in front of us, but yeah, yeah. Well, that's great. It's a journey worth taking. So yes. it's great. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Well, we appreciate it and we'll see you later. All right. You take care. Bye, Sydney.